Greetings folks, Rod Machado here. No doubt you've heard of a technique known as bracketing, which isn't something you do when flying into Bracket Airport in Southern California. Instead, it's a navigational strategy used to keep the course deviation indicator, the needle, centered when tracking a course or bearing to or from a navigational station. Let me share with you a very simple strategy for keeping your nav needle centered when tracking a bearing VOR course or localizer. One of the common problems that new pilots have is finding a heading that will keep their needle centered. Finding the correct heading for tracking becomes even more important as the antenna source or the GPS missed approach point is approached and the course sensitivity increases. What you don't want to see is a serpentining track that looks like this, unless of course it's accompanied by some good music. So here's a strategy that you can use right after you've intercepted the desired course. Let's track inbound on the 290 degree localizer course. Now I've simulated some pretty strong crosswind, gusts, nasty weather, and some rough turbulence so you can see me sweat a little bit as we do this in my coat and tie. We'll begin by flying the inbound localizer direction of 290 degrees and wait to see some needle movement. Here's where you have to be patient. There goes the needle to the right. Let's roll into a 10 degree bank on the attitude indicator, then immediately roll out. From this point on, you're not concerned about your heading at all. Now watch the needle. It appears that it hasn't stopped moving, so roll into and out of another 10 degree bank by focusing solely on the attitude indicator. Watch the needle again. It's returning to the centered position, so it's clear that the last 10 degrees of roll placed us beyond the desired wind correction angle. So let's roll into and out of a 10 degree bank to the left and see if this keeps the needle centered. Well, it looks like the needle is starting to move to the left just a little bit because crosswinds change on the approach. So let's quickly roll into and out of a 10 degree bank and see what happens. Now I don't see much needle movement, so let's roll into and out of a five degree bank to the left and see how this affects the needle. There you go. The needle is returning slowly to its centered position and we haven't had to refer to our heading indicator at all. At this point, I've established my wind correction angle and some pretty nasty weather. If the needle moves or even drifts slightly, I can roll into and out of a two and a half or five degree bank to stop it and return it to its centered position. Now keep in mind, this form of bracketing is done entirely on the attitude indicator, not the heading indicator. Now let me try this technique on the same 290 degree localizer course using a traditional instrument panel and I'll also move the RPM gauge over the heading indicator so I have no idea what my present heading is after turning inbound. And hopefully we won't be ramp checked by a simulator inspector because this panel modification will be pretty tough to explain. Once you're headed in the direction of the inbound course, Here's the general technique you want to use. Number one, roll in 10 degree intervals to stop the needle. Number two, roll in 10 degree intervals to center the needle. Three, when centered, remove the roll you applied in step two. Number four, then roll in two and one half or five degree intervals to stop or center a strain needle. I really like this form of bracketing for navigation because it involves using one less instrument, the heading indicator, while tracking any course. And this allows me to focus more of my attention on other things, such as the attitude indicator when flying an ILS or LPV approach. If you want to pass your IFR knowledge exam or your private pilot knowledge exam, then check out my 50-hour and or 40-hour instrument pilot eGround school or private pilot eGround school respectively. 
Not only will you pass the exam, but you'll learn more about the essentials of IFR or VFR flying that you just won't get in other ground training programs. Why? Well, because I've been instructing for over five decades, have personally written and illustrated seven aviation books, five of which are aviation textbooks, delivered training programs in all 50 states and many European countries, and have won countless awards from the FAA for my aviation training programs. In short, you won't be taught by a private pilot with limited experience and a basic ground instructor rating. Instead, you'll receive quality ground training that makes it easy and fun to learn. So visit rodmachado.com and check out the large selection of aviation educational courses.